And tonight, we're going to talk about lava, saying no to cremation, waiting for the good coffee, and a certain podcast host being spot on (laughs) in his prediction, including showing his work on the name and what it meant with Missy. That's right. We're going to talk dark water, and I'm Jesse Jackson, and with me is Charles Skaggs. Hey, Charles. Hi, Jesse. How are you today? I am great. Um, I have been looking forward to this all day because from my perspective, I'll just go ahead and do my quick thoughts. We have a great one to talk about today. I think so, too. I think um, this is part one of the uh, two-part season finale or the series eight finale, technically. But uh, it was a it was a nice little humdinger of a first parter. Yeah, and you know, and even it was such a good episode, it didn't even bother me that it was a two parter with a cliffhanger. Right. I mean, it felt like a full episode. Yeah. And and it was like, yes, of course. I mean, something this gorgeous and this great, it should last over two weeks. Right. Yeah. So I was really happy. You almost feel like you're watching like, you know, the Hunger Games Part One and Part Two, and you're like you're just ready for that next chapter. Yes, I mean don't get me wrong. If they had put it two hours, I would have been happy. But uh, it was so good. It isn't like I was, oh darn it, darn it, darn it. No, I was <laughs> like, okay, I, I have had. This sounds bad, but it's like I am satisfied with who my who. <laughs> you know, I am, I am sated. I am sated for now. <laughs> Ready to go. Um, also, so it wouldn't be like a four-hour podcast, you and I talking about yes. them together. And so I'm, um, I'm sure all of you are very grateful for that because you can't. We, we're much better in smaller doses. Absolutely. At least I am. <laughs> um, so let's start out with kind of the um, the beginning of the episode, the kind of preamble. Right. Um, you know, Clara trying to talk. To Danny on the phone, which I thought was interesting that she wanted to have a discussion where he couldn't see her Mm -hmm. in a little bit. I think that was a cop out, Uh, but I also understood what she was doing. I thought the um, posted notes uh, all over was interesting. It seems like she was really trying to get her thoughts together. Uh, What are your thoughts about that beginning? Well, I mean... This uh, this episode was um, it's, it for those who don't know it was written by Stephen Moffat, um, who was the showrunner. So you knew it was going to be a big episode, especially being the series finale, series eight finale, and um, uh, directed by Rachel Talalay, who uh, directed the um, Tank Girl, the movies Tank Girl and uh, Freddy's Dead: The Final Nightmare. So this this is someone with um, some some skill uh, in storytelling, and it was. Um, a very interesting director to choose for this episode, I thought. But uh, this opening with with Claire and, and the post-it notes, um, I thought it was interesting because it, it kind of made me think that Claire is very I don't know, like it just kind of shows how neurotic she is that she can't just simply tell Danny what she's been doing. Um, she has to kind of like remind herself, and she has to get this down. And she's got all these different random thoughts that uh, have been going, like, you know, there was post-its about the lying, about, you know, know, the Orient Express. There's all all kinds of random elements that we've seen throughout this past season. And uh, I just thought that, um, you know, that it was interesting that she has such a hard time telling you know Danny how she feels and what she's been up to and being honest with him and unfortunately it's like she finally says okay yes i love you and then we're like get the the revelation that he's been killed in a car accident walking across the street 
Yeah. Um, so before I talk about that, the question all our listeners want to know is, um, is the posted notes uh, what it looks like when you and I are talking <laughs> uh, on the podcast? Yes, we're all over uh, the place. Yeah. Uh, well, we we tend to not use posted notes, but I will tell you, um, I, at least from my perspective, I have a Word document up uh, on next to my screen with Skype and I am I, I take notes as I'm watching the episode and I'm highlighting things that I've said so I know that I've covered it and then I'm in like if Charles says something that reminds me I type in <laughs> something to the notes so um, this is very inside baseball yes this is um, but they but it's all on word and word document it is not posted notes everywhere yeah um, she wants to tell him the truth, and I thought that her uh, confession of her love was very sweet and very um, finite. Uh, you know, very much these those words for me are yours now. You know, you're the last person who's going to hear me say this. Um, you know, and she kind of um. It's very sad that she um, tells him all this, and then there's the silence. Yeah. And um, she played it very well. That sitting there, going, "Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for the shoe to drop. Tell me something. Tell me something." Mm -hmm. And um, when the lady starts talking, um, she uses some familiar words. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Yeah. I didn't catch that till the second time. Uh -huh. um, it was really, even though I thought as he was approaching the street, I was, I did think, Danny, you're a little close to the street, you know, back up a little bit. Yeah. Um, very, very, um, a powerful beginning. Yeah, I, I agree. Although I was, I was kind of wondering, like, why didn't we hear anything like a screeching sound? I mean, if there was a, if this is like, you know, a car, Danny crossing the road, presumably to get to the other side, um, you know, the, why wasn't there like a, you know, like a, and then followed by a thump? Very good point. Um, I th or did he just, you know, like, I mean, it just seemed like very quiet for a car accident, especially yes. you would think people would be screaming all, you know, like any bystanders who saw the accident would mm -hmm. be screaming. You would hear that over the phone, but there was nothing like that. Um, that's a very good point. So was um, that, was that just a screw up as far as the, uh, the audio production or, you know, like an oversight or was this, you know, something that maybe we'll find out in part two, like something surrounding that. I don't know. Yeah, uh, he, um, yeah, because you've got that very interesting, um, you just heard the silence. It's almost like a clicking. Mm -hmm. um, I, yes. I don't know about you, but I tend to, when I'm using my iPhone, sometimes my chubby cheek hits the <laughs> mute button without meaning to. And I'll start talking, and the other person yeah. will go, hello, hello, hello. And I go, like, oh, damn, I've hit mute. Uh, so uh, I don't know if that's what happened with them or not. I um, thought it was an interesting thing that – an interesting take that they do not show Danny in the street. They show the police cars, mm -hmm. and then they show her at the abandoned street. Right. So I thought that was really – Tasteful. Um, Yes, and a, a creative way to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, you don't really and, get the idea that Danny was mangled in that accident. Yeah. Or if he and, was, you know, if he was, we wouldn't see it. Right. And we hear the headmaster or the principal or someone in authority talking about the school, and we, you know, jumped talking ahead. about him. Yeah, we jumped yeah. ahead in time a little bit. Yeah, and the uh, we see the memorial wall, the flowers, and her just staring. Um, and then we get a very interesting conversation with her grandmother. Graham, I think, is what she's called in the credits. Yeah, yeah she's never actually given a full name. <laughs> right. But uh, this is the same Clara's grandmother, her gran, that we saw in the time of the Doctor, Matt Smith's final episode. So uh, she's returned. 
and she actually has a past with the um the actress has a past we've never established that yes the character is the same character that's been in uh the doctor but the actress was in a um i saw it on imdb mr uh encyclopedia charles <laughs> do you remember the episode i do not remember which doctor it was uh i don't oh no Oh, well, he's going to be so disappointed. <laughs> why, don't you, uh, why don't you tell me? Because no, I didn't. I'm, I didn't not, I'm not. Uh, I'm not up on Sheila Reed. Okay. Well, uh, yes. So I remember the actress's name. Mm-hmm. Oh, good for you. But, well, I'm looking her up. Talk to me a little bit about um, the way uh, Gran and her are talking. Yeah. The, and well, go she's, ahead. She's just trying to comfort Clara, obviously, because you know. Danny's dead and, you know, Claire is grieving, but, um, that, uh, you know, she's, she's trying to reassure her that, you know, it's going to be okay. And, and then, but it seems like Claire is just not really listening. Like, you know, she's already working in her head how she's, what she's going to do next. And, uh, what she does next is very interesting. Yes. Um, and, and I thought that, um, she was really, really, you know, her statements about it wasn't terrible. It was boring. It was an ordinary and I am owed better. I am owed, uh, is a unique take on her thoughts. Um, I, I didn't know if I necessarily agree with her and what she's, what do you think she's trying to say there, Charles? Um, you're talking about like Clara's reaction. Yep. Okay. Yeah. When she's talking to Grand, Yeah. About right. that. Yeah. Well, I think it's just more that she felt that, um, she kind of pictured it in her head that, you know, like something better that, that, yes. that, you know, this, the way Danny died, isn't how he should have died. You know that the that they should have been able to go on, have live their life together, and have that happy ending. Yeah, and also, and I that, she, and that she's done all this stuff, you know, with the doctor and saving people in time and yeah. space, and that maybe she feels that the universe owes her. Well, and I thought a little bit of the Tasha Yar character mm-hmm. in Next Generation in the um, in the Yesterday's Enterprise. Um, she talks about her um that she found out um that you know hers was a senseless death and she didn't want to do that and i felt that was his that was her point too that you know of all the exciting things she's done with the doctor all the um danger she's faced to have the love of her life die in just a ordinarily you know, ordinary yeah. car crash just seems Dis- senseless, disappointing, and senseless. Yes, right? yes. absolutely. Yeah. Um, what, and you what can purpose see- did it serve? Yes, right. And you could see she is thinking something. She has something on her brain. And now, to be fair, if I was friends with a time traveler, right. you know, I would be asking that question too. Yeah. Um, because um. You know, and one of the things that um, is very clear is these time can be rewritten rules are very timey wimey. <laughs> and you can't, it is very unclear what's the fixed point in time and what can you adjust and what can't you adjust. Right. Don't you agree? Yes, I do. Because, I mean, this is something that we've been through before, especially in the modern era of Doctor Who. Uh, we went through it with Rose Tyler wanting, you know, like in the episode Father's Day that, mm-hmm. you know, she she wanted the doctor. First, she wanted to go back and see her father. And then, you know, she ends up saving her father's life, and preventing his death. And that whole thing that she she wants to keep her father alive. And then we saw it again with um, like uh, with with Amy and Rory and, you know, just. The whole thing of it, like, you know, like of Rory dying and that, you know, that uh, the doctor should be able to go back and save him. And so there's there's always been that kind of uh, moral dilemma 
uh, with with you know the the notion that um, oh hey you've got a time machine why don't you go back and save the person who died and, yes and the ramifications of doing so absolutely by the way um, Sheila Reed played Etta in the Colin Baker Vengeance Vengeance on Varos yes part one and two that's right she did. So yeah, um, she was she was a very unlikable character in that episode. Okay, so then I'm sure it is not Clara's grand because Clara's grand seems to be very, very likable. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's and uh, the fact that, um, you know the the other character was on a completely alien planet named Varos. Yes. Um, the doctor's trying to call her, and at first she's ignoring the phone, which I thought was interesting, and I think. From my perspective, is shows that she's she's not ready to talk to him because she has not finished formulating her plan yet. She doesn't want to leave it up to the yeah. doctor to say, "Please go save Danny." She feels like she has to manipulate him. She has to put him in a corner right. where he can't refuse. Yeah, maybe maybe it's just you know how she her approach to dealing with this doctor as opposed to um, the eleventh doctor, but the, you know that maybe she figures that, and I I I get this kind of vibe that from the doctor that Clara, th- you know, has an idea that you know like maybe the do- in her head she doesn't think the doctor care this new doctor cares about her as much as the previous doctor. Yeah, at, at least from her, you know, that that's what she feels, even though that may not be the case. And, and in fact, you know, we've learned later in the episode that, yeah, no, it's not the case. He does right. still care about her. But um, in this case, she, uh, you, she feels like she, she has to manipulate him and get him to do what she wants, because otherwise he won't do it. Yeah. Um, and we, she, she goes to really extreme steps. She does. Uh, let's talk about that. Um, she... You know, he's, we get the credits, and yeah. we get kind of him waking up in the middle of some volcano, and then we cut to him in the TARDIS, and, you know, he asks Claire where she wants to go. She says she wants to see a live volcano. She gives a very um, vague reason why. Yeah, and the doctor keeps asking her why. Yes. and But but she's, all, she's very evasive, and mm-hmm. she's like, well, you know, I just want to see lava. Yeah. Which is kind of weird. And prove it. You know, he says yeah. it's boring and prove yeah. it. And as she's talking to him, you know, she's going around and she's picking up keys. Right. Uh, one in a little bitty, um, look like a little, you know, keepsake box. Right. One inside a, a book, which looked like the Time Traveler's it Wife. Was. It was indeed the Time Traveler's Wife. I saw a picture on Twitter. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Um, just all the way around, and uh, she asks for a sleeping patch because she hasn't been able to sleep, and it looks like she finds them, and um, she knocks out the doctor, and they wake up, and she says, I've got all seven TARDIS keys, and unless you go back, and um, she she wants something from them, and I do like the way she asked that. Um, you know, Danny Pink is dead, and the doctor's like, and? Yeah. And she's like, and fix it, change it, change what happened, save him, bring him back. Yeah, I think, um, that, I, I just think that, uh, yeah, Clara kind of has her own, like, like maybe she saw Lord of the Rings once too many times, where yes. she, she's, you know, throwing things into an active volcano. Yeah, she mentions <laughs> that, I guess, um, she he says, what's so good about lava? And she says it can, can destroy a TARDIS key. Now, I would think hardly anything could destroy a TARDIS key. Pretty much. Uh, by the way, I um, the TARDIS key now looks normal compared to how it used to look uh, in the classic. It, it, uh, it, it changes depending. Yeah. Sometimes it looks like that. Just, and, and then like during the Tom Baker era, I think that it had this kind of like shieldish design to it. A someone I work with gave me one of those. Right. Yeah. And it's very, it was very stylized design on on it. Yes. But um, yeah, sometimes, but sometimes it just looks like a regular house key. And you would think the doctor would have it on a key ring, (laughs) you know, even as despair, he'd have it just not by itself. Seems like it'd be easy to get lost. Yeah. Um, 
she is very determined that every time he says no, she is going to throw a key. Right. And um, and it's, she, you know, he calls her bluff. Right. And she's not bluffing. Yeah, she starts throwing in key after key. She's like, okay, here's one, bloop. Yeah. You know, and then you get the cloister, the TARDIS doing the cloister bell sound as each key is apparently destroyed in the lava. Right. And then um, here's the second one, bloop, dong, yeah. bloop, dong. And then yeah. until finally you get down to that last key. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she says it, and uh, she says, and, you know, she threatens him and saying, you know, I'm going to throw this away, and he doesn't believe she will. I mean, he he says, um, you know, go ahead, um, and it's this weird, don't threaten me, and don't tell me what to do, and all of a sudden she throws it away, and I think it hits her what she's done, and she starts crying, Right. and I love the line. I'd say I'm sorry, but I'd do it again. Right. You know, she is in so much pain. Um, but the doctor had a surprise up his sleeve, didn't he, Charles? Yes, he did. It's like, oh, guess what? What just happened didn't happen after all. Um, he uses, he basically reveals that he created a dream state for, to find out cl- how far Clara was going to go. And apparently she was going to go pretty far to get Danny back. Yeah. Now, I thought um, that he was going to snap his fingers and, like, the keys would reappear again. Yeah. That's what I thought was going to happen is the idea that, you know, the TARDIS can make uh, sonic screwdrivers, right? So that the, the sonic, you know, the TARDIS would just make a new key. Right. Uh, this was better, <laughs> so I'm, that's there's a reason why Stephen Moffat is writing the show and not I, but uh, that's where I thought it was going to come. Well, I was trying to figure out for me, like, what was the whole point of the like the keys being destroyed? Because, and 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 Stephen Moffat introduced this idea that the tar- the doctor could should just be able to open up the TARDIS doors with a snap of his fingers. Yes. So even if she gets rid of all the keys, he can still get inside the TARDIS. Yes. Presumably. So that's why I thought that, yeah, he just would pull out this whole snapping of the fingers trick and go, ha ha, guess what? Mm-hmm. And um, that would have been it. But no, it just turned out into this whole completely different thing, uh, you know, where you find out that, okay, this was, this was a test by the doctor. And she failed. In a sense, because yes. he, he did want to see how far she would go, and then, yes. so he wanted her. Like, okay, we can if we're going to do this, you got to be prepared to go all out. And apparently, she is ready to go all out. Yeah. And the sequence where she thinks she has she has no hope, and she asks where to go next, and he tells her. He tells her where they're going, not where she should go. Right. Is my note I put. Um, Because when he said go to hell, (laughs) she looked, yeah, yeah, I can understand that. And then, and I just love (laughs) this doctor. Uh, Peter Capaldi is just amazing. He is great, isn't he? And I say that with all my love to Tenet. And Smith and Eccleson and Davison and Baker <laughs> and everyone. But the confusion in his face of why are you leaving? You know, all that's in his yeah. eyes. Why are you leaving? I've told you what we're going to do uh, is just wonderful. Right. I, th- I totally agree. And yeah, it, it's okay to like more than one doctor. It's okay. Yes, it is. Yes, you, it is. You have my permission to like more than one yes. doctor. Yes. <laughs> You know, it isn't like you, you have don't have to, to. You don't have to pick. It's like, you know, it's Lay's potato chips. You can't eat just one. You right. Eat. <laughs> it's okay to like Kirk and Picard. It is. And Cisco uh, and Janeway yes, and Archer. Yes, exactly. And I just there is just something about him, and he has presence. Yes. Yeah. And he talks about. Just that exchange between them back and forth about he lashes out or he reams her out of how she's failed him. And but 
you know, he says, and I won't use it because this might be one of the lines, right? Um, you that can You can paraphrase. Yeah, that, you know, I, I care about you. I love you enough that I forgive you right. for your problems. And, you know, it's almost, you know, um, a biblical of this whole, you know, you, you love, you, you hate the sin and love the sinner. Right. I mean, this whole, I love you despite of your actions and why, and it goes back to the father daughter dynamic of this doctor and his companion. It doesn't matter how much you hurt me. I'm still going to keep caring about you and I would do anything I can to try to keep you from being sad. Right. And I agree. I I just love that whole moment. Um, I thought it was really um, an excellent way to define their relationship. And uh, I thought it brought a lot of gravitas to the, uh, the whole episode. Yeah. I, I, I almost feel like when I give my grade that, you know how in school they'll say, you know, X percentage of your grade goes toward <laughs> daily assignment and the final gets this percentage and your research paper gives this percentage and everything. I, I feel like 90% of my grade <laughs> is just that one dialogue between them. And uh, we even get um, their version of a Green Lantern oath, uh, which was <laughs> just so amazing. And then... Um, I also love the the almost it's it's not Han Solo it's 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 consistent when he says you were great but goodness had nothing to do about it yes this I don't deserve a friend like you Claire I'm terribly sorry but I'm exactly what you deserve yes I lo- I love that line yes <laughs> it, it was just but the, that, but the way he delivered though is is almost a little comedic in the sense that like yes. like sorry about your luck honey but yeah i'm exactly what you deserve <laughs> yeah it was just very wonderful um and um they go to look for danny pink yeah uh right Cla- yeah clara uses basically they they kind of go back to the episode listen and uh do the whole trick with clara using like sticking your fingers in the gooey tardis console and using the TARDIS's telepathic circuits to home in on wherever Danny currently is. Mm-hmm. And the doctor is like, you know, like just try to think about where he is now. Yes. Because yeah, we don't want to think about where he was, you know, before he died. We want to think about where he is now. And, you know, that just takes them to, uh, you know, eventually takes them to the, what we find out is the nether sphere. Yeah, and that was really interesting. Um, you know, I thought it was a great line when he says, "Well, the TARDIS thinks he's somewhere," and you know, moving. Yeah, he's kind of surprised that the TARDIS starts, yes, act- activating mm-hmm. and, and dematerializing. Um, the it's it's an episode that is um, clever more than funny. But there was some light moments with Danny in the waiting room and the bureaucrats and, oh, these yeah. forms, you know, <laughs> yeah, uh, they'll calm you down. Not really, but we still <laughs> need you to <laughs> fill them out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we get the return of Seb. Yes. Who uh, we last saw in the at the end of The Caretaker. Right. Where he was basically like, oh, yeah, uh, sorry, Missy's busy right now, so you're going to deal with me. Yes. So he's like her, her lackey. Yes. Um, and, uh, yeah, he basically gets to, to drop the bomb on Danny that, oh yeah, sorry about your luck, but you're dead. Yes. And he kind of makes a, um, kind of gives us a foreshadowing of, you know, cremation is bad, but he doesn't explain why until later in the, ep- or we don't yeah. find out why till later in the episode. Um, the, uh. They do show up. The doctor, uh, now we're back to Clara and the doctor. Yep. He's like, we don't know if this is where Danny is, but it's where the TARDIS thinks you're next going to meet him. Um, you know, let's get out there and win one for the Gipper. We see (laughs) 
you know, the TARDIS with fish tanks yes. in the mausoleum, but we find out they're not fish tanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, there were two. There are tombs with windows. Yes, and, and very, and very weird. important word tombs. Yes, uh, absolutely. They're water tombs, and uh, we find out that um, skipping ahead a little bit, but the dark water. And uh, I did think that was a few <laughs> fun thing. Like, I think all swims. You know, this is all swimming pools should have this. <laughs> Yeah, why? Yeah, the doctor's like still clueless, you know, about yeah, this. Why? Co- Think about it. I yeah. did. Why? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I find it completely endearing that uh, even yes. after, even after, you know, like we had a lot of that with Matt Smith's doctor. That that uh, Capaldi's doctor is still going to retain that little bit of like clueless innocence mm-hmm. about anything involving that, or he's just in complete denial about it. Who knows? Yeah, but um, I and it's funny. The um. The Christmas Carol episode, uh, right where they um, Matt meet the Matt Smith Doctor meets the young boy, and they have the bantering back and forth about kissing and what you should do. And he's right. like, "Well, you know what I did is went and you know <laughs> went and went and build some things or something." So there is a consistent in the Doctor of, in a lot of ways, being very naive. Um, so I, I like that too. Um, we um, we get Missy finally meeting the doctor, right? Right, but you know, it's very interesting because she in this the Missy that meets the doctor isn't quite what we've seen previously. No, um, she almost seems well. She well, she 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 claims she's an android, right? Um, Mobile uh, intelligence system s- interface, yes, right? Or M I S I Missy, yeah, Missy, yes. Yeah. And um, and then she kisses the doctor pretty deeply. Yeah, she just like really sm- lays it on him. And then three quick kisses on his nose. Yeah. Uh, and the doctor looks very stunned. Uh, yes. Yeah, well, as you would be. Yes. If this and, strange woman came out of nowhere and started like macking on you. Yeah. Um, and he. Especially it, if she looks, especially if she looks like Scary Poppins, she does look like <laughs> Scary Poppins. Uh, and then you know, Clara, they make a joke, something right, and Clara's like, "No, I'm good," because she needed to yeah. be, uh, you know, get their ring. Yeah, it was, and it was then the, the official welcome. Yes, um, and Missy says, "My heart is maintained by the Doctor," and we get the famous Doctor Who. Said by the doctor, yes. which he, is he said wonderful. the thing. Yes. Now, has that happened before? Uh, yes, it's happened numerous times before. Okay. With the doctor saying, "Doctor, yes, Who? yes, okay. yes, it has." Okay. Um, and then, but I love the Doctor Who, Doctor yeah. Chang. Yeah, you know, and just, uh, it was just yeah. so funny because uh, there's no. Um, self-awareness any joke about it at all just very very cool right um yeah we 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 meet dr chang who uh is basically given the sole purpose of explaining what dark water is yes and that uh basically it's we find out that um it's something it's a it's a liquid that only uh shows um you can only see organic material in it so if you're like wearing a glove all you'll see if you dip it in inside the dark water is you'll see your hand and that's it. Right. So presumably uh, there's mm-hmm. more to uh, these skeletons than what we're, what we're led to believe. Absolutely. Um, we did get to see Danny um, uh, meeting uh, a young child that, it appears he killed in battle, right? Yeah, we we finally get an idea of what was so traumatic uh, mm-hmm. when he was a soldier that he's been blocking out, and we we learned that apparently he killed a boy, young boy, somehow um, while during his time, at, you know, in service as a soldier. But uh, we don't know exactly why, but apparently that boy is. Um, uh, just happens to be there thanks to a uh, arranged meeting by Seb uh-huh. um, just to say, just to, I don't know, just to kind of put thoughts into Danny's head about like, well, you know, I can't deal with this 
you know, like I've, I, he tries talking to the boy, the boy runs away and Danny's has a hard time, you know, with emotionally with that. And so of course, then he's offered the option, like, well, I'm sorry, you're having so much trouble. Um, here, here's an iPad. And, uh, if you click here, uh, you can delete your emotions. Yeah. And that was, um, that was a really nice cliffhanger because um, jumping ahead a little bit, uh, somehow through a hand wave <laughs> through the MacGuffin, Clara could talk to Danny because their Wi-Fi is really strong because yeah. they have Steve Jobs there. Yeah, and um, <laughs> which I thought was a funny line. It was a funny line, and that. And then immediately Samsung, you know, tries to say that, you know, they they come out with like, oh, we, that's okay. We've we've we now have uh, our tablets in the afterlife. So you yes, because yeah, the Samsung has to follow Apple. Absolutely. Um, the and the doctor has to go. Uh, we're kind of jumping ahead, but I want to get with. He's like, you need to prove Danny is Danny. You know, you, you need to make sure something only he would know. Um, and he tells her to be strong, even if it breaks your heart. And um, I thought those were pretty good lines. I was a little disappointed in Danny. And I guess it's not fair for me to <laughs> criticize him. After all, he is just dead. Yeah, give him a break. He's dead. Yeah, he's, he's, having, dead. A, he's having a bad day. He's having a bad day, but he couldn't think of anything to tell Clara. Uh, and he was also obsessed with the idea that Clara would try to end her life to join him. Right. He's not thinking of the TARDIS or anything. Right. Which is, but again, he's having a bad day. He's not thinking clearly. Anything else on that you wanted to talk about? Uh, yeah. Um, that uh, you know we we you know we Danny's offered that option to to delete his emotions. Um. I noticed that, uh, you know, that uh, she, Clara has that one, you know, again, she's able to talk to Danny, but, you know, doesn't really, you know, still doesn't tell him what she wanted to tell him originally, which yeah. I thought was interesting because I mean, you figure like, well, maybe this is my last and only chance to talk to you. Um, and she still doesn't open up about it unless she's figuring in her head, well, I'll see you again. Right. Down the road. You know, somehow it's all going to work out. Yeah. Um, that if there were if there was a weak part of the episode, that was kind of my weak part. Yeah, they kind of glossed over it a little bit. Yeah, I would have liked to seen something a little better. Yeah. Um, but that's a minor nitpick. Yeah. Um, because, we do get the reveal that the skeletons are Cybermen. Yes. Um, yeah, the, I, the, the tanks drain, and yes. all of a sudden you start seeing Cybermen armor and. Um, that, uh, the doctor even is like, Oh, it's Cybermen. So yep, yeah, there you go. Um, yeah. and, uh, yeah, they, they they basically find out that these tombs, key mm -hmm. word again, uh, are tombs of the Cybermen. Yeah. And the, uh, logo of the circle with the smaller circle is actually the Cybermen eyes. Yes. Yeah, the, the little teardrop, that little, yes. that little teardrop, you know. Yeah. Yeah, we thought that was a nice little touch. I thought that was a really nice touch that I did not get. I want to I see that, like, the contractor is like, okay, all right, I have these, we have to specifically make these, this look like Cybermen eyes. Yes, <laughs> whenever, absolutely. Whenever they created this structure. Yeah. And. Because it would be awesome when we, yes. when we reveal. I also thought, um. Going back to the GUI interface, the literal GUI interface, yes. Uh, when they used to find Danny, was a nice callback. You know, they set that up really well in that early episode where they, she thinks of Danny. They get to his timeline, and we can do this. Um, once again, was set up for this episode. So well done, Mr. Moffat. Right. Um, I shadowing. Yes. Very well done. Um, the, we see the, uh, matrix data slice, the Gallifrey and hard drive. Yeah. Uh, that this, was kind of cool. Yeah. This is, it was basically another old school shout out, 
uh, to the Matrix because the Matrix actually existed before Keanu Reeves, believe it or not. Yes. Um, which is uh, one of the contentions that the Matrix kind of borrowed elements from Doctor Who. Um, that uh, this was a, this was a um, a this was a concept that was introduced in uh, this Tom Baker era during this episode called the Deadly Assassin. Okay. Um, which also featured the Master. And um, now is this an early no no Ghost no, no, no 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 okay I'm, this is just kind this, of a bonus this this is a bonus this is this, this is if we were in a comic book this, this would be the footnote yeah this is this is bonus yeah. bonus this homework. is a footnote that yes. says see yes okay, reference yeah ahead. yeah Marvel team up issue number thirty four no yes um no uh yeah this is um yeah this is a, a Gallifreyan memory storage system. That uh, it's 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 basically like an a an like a, a virtual reality essentially, okay. um, where like all this information about that the time lords have gathered, um, including you know various people and whatnot. It's just it's this repository, and uh, which I think again was where the Matrix film borrowed it. The idea of this virtual world, okay. where where anything can happen, and. Um, the master kind of like is, you know, assumes control of this thing and it, it showed up again, uh, in Colin Baker's, uh, the time, the trial of a time Lord season, his final season, uh, especially it was in the ultimate foe, uh, the final episode where, uh, the sixth doctor enters the matrix. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, you've, it's, it's definitely something that was, you know it, it, that has been previously established, but we kind of wondered: well, was that destroyed when Gallifrey went away during mm -hmm. the during the Time War? But it, yes. apparently, it hasn't. And the Master was smart enough to go like, "Oh, excuse me, you're not using this. I will take it. Yes, I'll keep this right right here, and uh, we'll just hold on to that for a while." Um, we we do get the reveal. Um, I, as I have mentioned on Twitter, <laughs> I made the mistake of, um, going on Twitter Saturday afternoon here in the States. And, uh, there was a link for, uh, Missy and I thought it was just not thinking about time, everything we know about her up to, uh, tonight's episode you had a and it wasn't, you got, I spoiled. got spoiled, uh, uh, but I was, um, not totally spoiled because <laughs> a certain co-host uh, had talked about what? that Missy could be short for mistress, which is a female master. So uh, <laughs> did you give a shout? Did you do a fist pump, Charles? No, just with your happiness. Um, I was just, you know, pleased as punch that like for everybody that's been faithful um to this show, to Next Stop Everywhere, um, from the beginning, if you listen to Deep Breath, we talked about it in that episode, or that review, and um, where I, I posited the little theory, um, which I thought, you know, was pretty obvious. I, it was so obvious, I did I was like, there's no way Stephen Moffat's going to do this, but I ran with it anyway, so I guess I'm glad I did, because, you know... Um, it turned out pretty good that, uh, yeah, oh, by the way, uh, Missy is short for mistress, and, uh, yeah, it basically means that now we have a female master. And I think that that, uh, that this is basically Stephen Moffat's nod to um, all the kind of criticism about not picking a female doctor, you know, taking Peter Capaldi instead of a female doctor. Um, so it's like his little, like, like okay, I didn't give you a female doctor, but how about we give you do a female master instead? And it establishes that um, a regeneration can change sexes, right? Um, if it was in fact a regeneration and not something else. Oh, good point. Right, because if anybody who watched the Paul McGann mini episode, The Night of the Doctor, mm -hmm. um, with the Sisterhood of Karn, yes, where they offered. Uh, the doctor to become the chance to become man or woman. Right. If you paid attention to that, you'll be like, well, you know, there are other options too. Mm -hmm. So we don't know exactly yet how 
you know, John Sim became Michelle Gomez, but um, uh, apparently, hopefully, we get some answers in uh, next week's episode. Um, another very funny line um, was when um, the doctor mentions you have stairs. <laughs> and she says, well, I'm not a Dalek, yeah, just... uh, which I thought was yeah. very funny. Yeah. Uh, that's definitely a shout out to yeah. the classic Who fans. Yeah, because, yeah, with the whole issue originally that Daleks couldn't climb stairs until it was revealed in Remembrance of the Daleks that, oh, yeah, we they actually have little hover things. So if yes. they need to go upstairs, they can go upstairs. So stairs will not save you from a Dalek. Right. Um. The uh, kind of to end the episode, you know, Clara sees the Cyberman um, in Dr. Chang's office or whatever it yes. is. Yes. And we get the whole Dr. Chang um, and Missy's bantering back and forth that, you know, she's going to I've got all day and I'm not going to kill you till you say something nice. And then he actually tries to say something yeah. nice and it doesn't work. And she kills him. Yes, she does. <laughs> um and then she later says, "Crazy Scottman in the street," which I thought was wonderful. <laughs> yeah, because uh, yeah, basically the doctor, like um, after you know the whole revelation about uh, Missy being the mistress, that uh, he races outside the complex where they're at the the Nether Sphere, only to find out, oh, well, guess what? The Nether Sphere is really inside St. Paul's Cathedral. Yes, and uh, in London, and you know modern London, so 2014 presumably, but um, and then from there we get a nice little shout out to uh, an old school episode called the Invasion, uh, which was a Patrick Troughton episode where we got to see the Cybermen marching through London, and they were marching from St Paul's Cathedral. Ah, so, so that whole sequence there with the Cybermen going down the steps of St. Paul's cathedral toward the, you know, that was a, that was a deliberate homage to the invasion. Okay. So I also highly recommend watching that episode. So you've got, you got a lot of homework this week, kids. Yes, we do. Um, she, so she basically has said that, um, humankind, there's more dead humans than there are live humans. Um, she has a, a plan to bring back the dead mm -hmm. as Cybermen, yeah, and to conquer the Earth. Yeah, apparently the Nether Sphere, the you know, the Matrix, is really just like a, a dumping ground for like their these people, these the dying people's essences, their souls, if you will, so that um, they can be like placed into Cybermen bodies um, after they have their emotions deleted. Yeah. That's that's the that's the big plan. Now the question is, of course, well, why is the master, the mistress, working with the Cybermen? Mm -hmm. So is the is are the Cybermen working for the mistress, or is the mistress working for the Cybermen, or pretending to work for the Cybermen, and eventually being the mistress will eventually screw the Cybermen over? Yeah, and uh, it reminds me a little bit of the Christmas special. Where the governor thought he was the doctor, <laughs> and we had the female, uh, you know, leader of the Cybermen. Yeah, the, well, he's no, wasn't the governor. That was on Walking Dead, but yeah, uh -oh. the that actor, actor, the yes. actor. Yes, yes, I know. <laughs> but uh, we must well call him the governor because everybody's got to call him the governor now. Yes. Um, but yeah, he, uh, yeah, the in the uh, the next doctor, which was a, yes. a great David Tennant story. Absolutely, a wonderful Christmas story. Um, so we talked a little bit, but let's kind of, where are we at? Um, the master, also known as mistress, also known as Missy, yeah, is admitted her plan to the doctor. Right. And he's in shock that his former friend, kind of like Lex Luthor and Superman, yep. uh, has returned. And kissed him. Yes. <laughs> um. Danny has told Clara he loves her and she has hung up on him because she says saying I love you is the easy thing to do. And I don't believe you're really Danny if that's all you're going to say. Uh, so she has lost faith and Danny is so distraught. He his finger is over the iPad 
to delete his emotions. Precariously over the button. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. And uh, we get see you next week. Did oh. I miss any of the cliffhangers? Uh, yeah, the Cybermen invading London. Oh, I, that's yes, yes. Well, <laughs> that's kind of a big. That's kind of a big one. <laughs> yes, yes, that's implied. Yes, yeah. indeed. Uh, you, yeah, you got the Master and the Cybermen teaming up to invade London. What's yes? What the what? Yes, very cool. Um, what else do we need to talk about in the episode? Um, well, I think that's that's pretty much it. Although, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, we forgot to mention that uh, the dead is aware of what happens to their body. Oh, yeah. The, after they're done. Yeah. That, that's the whole, what the white noise was. And so. Um, the whole I, cremation debate. Yes. Yeah. Which I'm, I'm trying to figure out because they basically like try to make it very anti-cremation. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, yeah, you'll be aware about you getting crispy fried. But I'm thinking. Right. But in my thoughts is like, well. What what's the alternative? You're going to be able to know that you're being worm food in the ground and rotting. Yes. So yeah. I would think it would be better to be cremated than you'd be at least over pretty quickly. Yes. So uh, good, yeah. interesting point. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely mm-hmm. I'm on the pro cremation side. <laughs> okay, good. Because um, I don't want to be worm food. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else we need to cover on the episode? Um. I don't know. I think that was pretty much it. Okay. I think uh, you did a pretty good job with that. Yeah, really good episode. A lot of cool themes. Um, I yeah. really am excited about the next episode. Yeah. Uh, I, was glad to see, I was glad to see Creepy Cybermen again. Yes. Because uh, in recent in Modern Who, they haven't been very scary or very intimidating. Yeah. Um, and I think that's just up to just poor writing. Mm-hmm. Because these these... The uh, Cybermen are really creepy when they're handled effectively. I mean, they did it back in the 60s. So if they can make them creepy back then, they should be able to make them creepy now. And uh, I think that uh, the the whole revelation of, you know, like, you know, that they're these skeletons that turn in, you know, like, oh, guess what? They're Cybermen. And I, th- I thought that was really effective use. And I hope we see more of those creepy Cybermen. Yeah. And it also had a little bit of like the silence that was in the water tanks. Right. Uh, you know, That's so um, yeah, really, really um, using a common theme, but not in a bad way. Just this. It, it's a very creepy reveal that they're setting up that, yeah. you know, as that water, as the dark water fades. Yeah. You know, there we are. And the uh, CGI Cybermen looked really good. Yeah. Mo- Mo- Stephen Moffat obviously has a thing for monsters and fish tanks. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Um, your turn. You get to give the uh, favorite uh, line of the episode, and we may have to do more than one. Uh, yeah. I, um, I, you were kind enough not to spoil it, so um, if you're, I might as well go ahead and say the one that we've all been thinking. Yes. Um, do you think that I care for you so little that betraying me would make a difference? Yes, um, I just love that line. It's like yes, it it shows that yes, the twelfth Doctor does care. He cares about Clara. He cares about what Clara thinks of him, and um, you know he's that he's telling her that yes, you there is nothing you could do that would you could betray me up and down the street, and I'm still going to care for you. Yeah, um, it it really is a beautiful line, and and as a, it truly as a father, um, you know there is Aaron Sorkin has used this line in a couple episodes. Um, you know, one of the things that Sorkin does is he likes to reuse dialogue, mm-hmm. and you know he had. Um, the um, the um, president talk about this both in West Wing and um, in the American president, and he had it in the Sports Night where a parent says, "The only thing you need to do to make me proud of you is to come home safely." Something along that line, and I love the idea that do you think I care for you so little 
that you betraying me would make a difference. I mm-hmm. have it is unconditional love, right? Which is the love of a parent for a child. Um, I, I love the go to hell, mm-hmm. and then when they go back and forth. Um, so mine is Danny. Bring him back, <laughs> or I swear you will never step into your TARDIS again. <laughs> That's a good line. Uh, yes. One, one, one of the other lines that I liked, um, when um, Clara was all upset um, mm-hmm. in the tar- about Danny and everything, um, the doctor tells her, you know, like, you're quite a mess of chemicals, aren't you? Yes. Uh, I love the, wherever it is that where people go when they die, we're going to find Danny, and if it's possible, we're going to bring him home. And then, of course, the... Uh, Green Lantern Oath, The Darkest Day, The Blackest (laughs) Hours, Chin Up, Shoulders Back, Let's See What You, We Are Made Of, You and I. Yeah, change Um, just enough so that DC Comics doesn't sue. Yes, but I thought it was just really, really um, nice. Uh, Another great line is, um, we are here to get your boyfriend back the dead, Yeah. so buck up and give me some attitude. I love that. I love that. (laughs) Yes. uh, Yeah. Yeah, that, you know, he's like, okay, we're, you know, this is big. We should be like, yeah, well, let's go. Yeah. We get, you know, yeah. you know bring it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, So, yeah, a lot of great lines. And like I said, not a lot of, there is some cleverness and some humor, uh, but it's not a funny episode. It's a very serious episode, but just a really good one. So um, you get to go first. Um, oh. I'm curious about your score. Uh, my score, uh, actually, I give this one nine out of ten Cybermen fish tanks. Ah, so I, as usual, grade a little easier than uh, easier than you. I'm going to give it nine and a half inflatable eyes. <laughs> Ooh, that's, <laughs> so, that's your strongest rating of the season. I, I really, really like this episode. And like I said, I think a bulk of it is their discussion in the TARDIS after the dream sequence there was so much dialogue there it and we've earned it we've earned it by this season of storytelling right the give and the take between clara and the doctor um it just was really well done and um and for all those people who don't like clara who thought she was just a gimmick um you know she's coming to her own this season she is a full-fledged character. She is a flawed character. I think a lot of flaws. Right. Um, but just, I have loved her journey this year, and it's just, I'm, I'm looking forward to next week seeing what happens. Yeah, she's a much more three-dimensional character this season. Uh, yes. More, more depth to her. Um, some of it's neurotic depth, but... Yes. Because, um, she, yeah, she's neurotic, but, you know, that's, it, mm-hmm. it, it, it makes her more real and relatable, in my opinion. Yes, I totally agree. And uh, and then we'll just have to see where this uh, season, you know, next week's episode, Death in Heaven, goes because uh, sometimes Stephen Moffat doesn't always stick the landing. That is a fair, fair uh, thought. Sometimes he does, like the Big yes. Bang, but sometimes he doesn't. Right. So um, you will just have to hope that, uh, you know, like, because, I mean, this is such a strong first part. So we just have to hope that... Uh, yeah, he, you know, we can just keep that momentum and keep that that kind of storytelling because I mean there was a lot, like you said, there was there was humor in this, but I mean it's a very dark episode. We're talking about death and cremation and and you know just the afterlife and so some really heavy um, metaphysics here. Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, yes, that's your big word of the day, kids. Metaphysics. Yes. Um, so yeah, some some really interesting subject matter. So it's 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 not a lightweight episode by any means. Even though yes, you have Cybermen monsters, but yeah, um, it's not. Yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, meat to this episode. Yeah, absolutely wonderful. Um, we did not get any feedback. Um, there was. Um, I don't know if it's because we're uh, recording so quickly <laughs> or everyone was just so happy it was Halloween weekend. Yes. yes. But uh, so um, please, please send us your thoughts on um, what you think is going to happen 
uh, next week or your thoughts on Missy yeah. complimenting Charles for being <laughs> so spot on, uh, criticizing me for giving uh, a 9.5, uh, whatever you want. Uh, Charles, since we have no feedback, let's go to reverse the, reverse the polarity. Oh, great. Um, this one should be kind of obvious considering um, – some of the subject matter that we discussed earlier, but um, I'm going to go all the way back to 1967 um, with the Tomb of the Cybermen. Okay. Because, you know, we had tombs um, and we had Cybermen. So we had Tombs of the Cybermen. So that's what I'm going with. It's kind of, yeah, just roll with it, people. Um, yes. <laughs> so this was from season five of Doctor Who's original um, 26 season run. Uh, written by Kit Pedler and Jerry Davis, the creators of the Cybermen, and um, the uh, the story it's it's basically like um, almost a little a little Raiders of the Lost Arkish, but um, like uh, on the on the planet Telos, uh, there's this archaeology archaeological expedition uh, arranged that. They're in search of the remains of the Cybermen, which apparently the Cybermen died out like 500 years before this story was told. And um, so it's, you know, like they become this, like, you know, just almost this mythic um, creation. So, um, of course, you know, like uh, the doctor, uh, the second doctor, which would be Patrick Troughton's doctor, uh, Jamie, his companions, Jamie McCrimmon and Victoria Waterfield uh, arrive just just happen to be there. Uh, they show up uh, probably because sexy told them, you know, like they need to go there. Um, and they, uh, on the planet, tell us they find this vast chamber um, with this multi-story structure uh, containing cells of uh, frozen Cybermen. Mm. So, um, so the, what we saw in, in dark water, these tanks, rows of tanks with Cybermen in them was indeed a, a, a big shout out to the tomb of the Cybermen. So, you know, Dark Water is like, you know, hitting the Tomb of the Cybermen, a Patrick Troughton episode, the Invasion, a Patrick Troughton episode. So um, I'm presuming there's going to be more. Maybe we'll get like the Wheel in Space, which is another Cybermen, Patrick Troughton episode next season or next week. But um, so anyway, so like, uh, you know, the... The, the Cybermen, of course, wake up because, you know, it's a Cybermen episode. So, of course, they're going to wake up from their tombs and they, you know, their intent is to invade Earth. So, um, so basically, if you enjoy dark water um, with the Cybermen, you know, like popping out of tombs and ready to invade Earth. Well, there you go. Here's another great blast from the past uh, with the Tomb of the Cybermen, a, one of Patrick Troughton's best stories and uh, highly recommended. Very nice. Uh, very cool. Um, so we only have one episode left, and then uh, <laughs> the short wait for the Christmas special, right? And then the long wait for the next season. <laughs> yeah, we're, um, we're gonna have to fill up that schedule somehow, aren't we? Yes, we are. And uh, dear listeners, we're already discussing plans. Uh, we're going to go through uh, a fair amount of the reverse the polarity we also are going to do a season wrap up uh we have friends of the podcast that want to join us um so we'll also just kind of have some theme episodes we plan to keep on podcasting if not every week every other week uh charles is busy with his <laughs> constantine podcast and i'm trying to uh but never too busy for next stop everywhere never never this is always our first love yeah exactly um so yeah um and we have a, a certain anniversary of some tv show yes we coming do up uh you know like yeah. maybe the 51st anniversary on November 23rd. Right. Um, the second. The start of the second 50 years. <laughs> yes. So, so uh, yeah. Yeah, you, you, we, uh, yeah, we might want to cover that. Absolutely. Was there any... Uh, you were at a convention this weekend. Was there any Doctor yes. Who news or uh, there was a no, guest? There was no Doctor Who news or a guest. Uh, there was going to be a guest, Eric Roberts... Uh, the master from the 1996 TV movie with Paul McGann, but he canceled. Oh no. Yes. So, um, so sadly I did not get to meet him because I wanted to. Um, mm -hmm. 
Because it would have been like, oh, finally, the Ohio Comic Con gets a guest yes. from Doctor Who. So even though like everybody was in costume, playing a lot Doctor, of Who, Doctor Who cosplay, tons of tens, tons of elevens. I found one twelve. The nice. f- my, my very first uh, Peter Capaldi cosplay. Uh, yes. Actually, there was a few Patrick Troughton doctors, second doctors. So that nice. was a nice surprise. Plenty of fours, of course, because everybody likes playing Dom Baker because of the scarf. Yes. So, um, uh, yeah, just, um, you know, you've had, you had, <coughs> excuse me, um, you had uh, one today that was the 10th doctor with the John Sim Master, which I thought was pretty good. Ooh, that does sound yeah, cool. Yeah, so I'll be having pictures of that up on um, on the, my Facebook page. Um, mm-hmm. And then um, you had, uh, you know, like some roses, you know, rose tilers, um, you know, with, with her, you know, like maybe sl- there was like uh, some ninth, a couple of ninth doctors. So, uh, yeah, you had a lot of people wanting to to cosplay doctor who so yeah you would think uh, hopefully that wizard world uh would kind of step up their doctor who guests yes and there there was there was also i want to mention there was a um a a uh amateur you know cosplay group that did a doctor who panel uh team con doc okay that uh you know has, has done some conventions around uh the midwest uh, area and then um, they're huge big Doctor Who fans so um, so I I went to that panel and it was uh, you know it was it was interesting because they kind of ad libbed it they didn't really like have anything really written out and organized but they kind of mm-hmm. winged it so uh, but it was it was great that at least you know they did something Doctor Who during the convention very nice and you got to say. Uh, hello to friend of the show, Tom Zoller. Yes, yes, who was kind enough to the the wonderful person who designed the Next Stop Everywhere logo. Yes. So uh, we got to talk and we got to share Jesse Jackson stories, and yes. uh, it was it was great. You know, just uh, I've, I've I've met Tom before because he he goes to uh, Ohio Comic Con quite a bit uh, every so often. And uh, so I've seen him over the years, but uh, it was great to see him after that he had designed the logo, and it was great to thank him in person. Absolutely. Uh, he is working to try to get down to a February convention that's happening here in Dallas, so I'm hoping to do that, uh, to get to see him um, and hopefully his lovely fiance Amy. Oh. Uh, okay. Well, I think that's it. Uh, great discussion. Uh, we now have to wait our six days. It's a um, long wait to death in heaven. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, but um, I uh, hopefully the payoff will be there. Hopefully, uh, you and I will 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 think good thoughts that uh, Stephen will stick the landing, as you put it. Fingers crossed. Yes. Um, where can we find you, Charles? Uh, you can find me pretty much all over the internet on. Uh, Let's see. I'm on the Facebook. I'm on the Twitter at Charles Skaggs on Twitter. Um, and uh, let's see. We're also on, I'm on Instagram, uh, the Google Plus that all the crazy kids are doing. Um, and uh, let's see. There's also this little blog called Damn Good Coffee and Hot, which covers Doctor Who, Next Stop Everywhere, all kinds of comics, sci-fi, geeky stuff that uh, – Hopefully you enjoy, and uh, if you find that stuff interesting, you want to learn, you know, what's coming up in movies, TV, whatnot. Uh, come check it out. Yeah, they uh, really a lot of good stuff. Um, Charles has been writing about um, so uh, very cool. Um, we did reach a hundred yes. likes on our Facebook page. Yes. Thank you very yeah. much, everyone. A special shout out again to my sister in law, Lisa Brockhouse, for. Uh, Getting us over the over the the goal total of a hundred, yes. uh, we're now I think we're at one oh seven. I think so. I think um, that was the last time I checked, but uh, so we're on the road to the mighty two hundred. Yes, I am. Uh, I want to send a thank you. I hopefully that some of my um, uh, in my uh, work life, we have a uh, center in Manila, and uh, I went and visited them last January. And uh, they're always big fans of listening to uh, me talk about – there are a lot of uh, science fiction fans there in Manila. And so um, 
I know that I sent them a lot of requests and a lot of the guys and gals there liked us. So thank you to all my coworkers that I have, uh, you have not viewed it as spam in your Facebook saying, <laughs> please like me, please like me. Um, you can reach us at Next Stop SMG on Twitter. Uh, Next Stop Everywhere SMG on gmail.com. I am at JWJ170104 on Twitter. And as we talked about, Next Stop Everywhere is on Facebook. And Jesse Jackson, I'm on Facebook. Um, And just because we have 107 doesn't mean you should stop liking the Facebook page. We want to hit 200. 200. That's the new goal. So if you're sick of of us talking about wanting to get to 100, well, now you're going to be sick of us talking about wanting to get to 200. And we we still need uh, iTunes ratings and reviews. Uh, we're uh, a couple of the podcasts ahead of us are like at 20, 30 reviews, and we certainly want to get there so that we can get more listeners. Come on, guys, we we need your help. We can't do this without you. Absolutely. Um, so look forward to hearing feedback on the show our podcast or just anything who related and suggestions maybe on what you'd like us to do during the off season. Yep. Cause we're, we're definitely not going anywhere. So if you're yes. worried that, uh, you know, once the series eight ends, uh, we go on hiatus and you wouldn't hear from us until this Christmas special. And then you wouldn't again, hear us again until series nine starts. Whenever series nine starts, uh, yes. we're going to officially put your fears to rest. Because or, us, or, or, or maybe we'll, or maybe we'll cause some fears. Your fears. Yes, we'll confirm your fears that uh, yeah, we're not going anywhere. Charles and I are having too much fun talking. <laughs> uh, the doctor. Yes, uh, it's it's an addiction that uh, I don't want to stop. No, and it is um, truly uh, a joy to visit with you every week. So same here. Final words. Anything uh, else, or we're done. I think we're done. I've, I've done okay. a lot. Of, uh, this is my second podcast of the afternoon. Yes. I think after Ohio Comic Con and two podcasts, I think I'm ready to, to kick back and, and take it easy and watch Walking Dead. <laughs> All right. Very nice. Uh, same thing here. Uh, so this is Jesse Jackson for Charles Skaggs saying <laughs> thank you so much. Keep hope alive. And remember the drumming. Can't you hear it? I thought it would stop. But it never does. Dun, 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 dun. Never ever dun, 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 stops. Dun, 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 dun. Inside my head, dun, dun, dun. the drumming, the doctor, dun, 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 dun. the constant drumming. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. If you would like to donate to help pay for this and other Southgate Media Group podcasts, simply go to our website, southgatemediagroup.com, and click on the donate button. It can be as little as a dollar or, well, as much as you want. <laughs> Help keep this fun going by supporting this and our other shows. Thanks again for listening, everyone. You're the best fans in the world.